Let's talk a little bit about wall jumping. I was looking around in this old project of mine and I realized I never actually made a video about wall jumping. And you know, I probably should make a video about that because it's a pretty common thing. So let's take a look at how to make something like this. We're here in a fully empty project, the final version of which with the wall jump implemented is going to be available for Patreons and YouTube members through the links down below in the description. Now, let's get started and open up our third person blueprint that we have over here. And in that, we're going to be working in the event tick because we want to check every single frame whether or not we should be doing any wall jumping or any wall sliding first and foremost. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking for a wall first. Then if we find a wall, we're going to slowly slide down it. And during that wall slide, we'll enable ourselves to wall jump. And we want to do that every frame, at least the checking for the wall. So start with event tick. And we're going to make a new custom event as well. And we'll call this a uh, wall slide which we will run every frame in event tick. Just to keep things a little bit more organized, we're going to uh, split this up into a couple of different functions. The first thing we want to do in the wall slide is add a branch node. And that is because even though we're going to be checking every frame for a wall that we want to collide with, we only want to do this when we're falling to begin with. So we don't want to do any line traces, which is what we're going to be doing here uh, in a second, unnecessarily. So let's first and foremost get our character movement component, and we just want to check is falling. This is a little bit of a counterintuitive node because it says is falling. Uh, what this really is, is a bool that tells you whether or not you are not grounded. So if you are moving upward, so if you're jumping, it will still say that you are falling because that's just the way this uh, program works. It's a little counterintuitive, but just be mindful of that. If we are not falling, we don't want to do anything. But if we are falling, that is where we're going to do a line trace by channel. And then we're going to trace from a starting position to an ending position. The starting position is going to be really easy. That will just be our get actor location. That's where our trace is going to be starting. And then we're going to trace in the direction that our character is looking. So we need to be roughly looking toward a wall for this to work. We don't want to be able to stick to a wall when we're looking away from it, because that would be a little bit weird. So the way we do that is we get the actor forward vector, and that is just the direction in the world that our character is facing. But it's a really, really short line in a certain direction. So in order to make that line longer, we're going to multiply this and we're going to change this bottom pin here from a vector into a float. And this will be how far away from the wall you can be before you start snapping to the wall. So in my case, I'm going to do 100, which is quite close by because I don't want this to be too sensitive and have me snap to walls that I don't want to be snapped to. Then we're going to add the result of that to our current actor location. And that is then going to go into the end position pin here. So now we're going to trace from our actor's location to 100 units in front of our actor's location. Then we can set the visibility channel to uh, whatever channel we want to trace on. We're going to go for visibility. After we do that, we're going to go into another branching node. And this return value will just say, hey, did I hit anything at all? Uh, if we did, we'll do something, and if we didn't, we'll do something else. That being uh, setting a bool for whether or not we're wall sliding. This is just nice information to have, be it for using in other code, or be it for playing like animations in your state machine. So we'll make a variable here, uh, call that b is wall sliding, and we will just set that to true if this line tracer hits something and we will set that to false if this line tracer doesn't hit anything so the top one is going to be true now if we are going to be wall sliding uh, we want to set our actor location to be exactly perpendicular to the wall we can come in at a slightly glancing blow with this line tracer that we've got here but the moment we start wall sliding we want to actually be perpendicular to the wall and the way we can do that is with our out hit that we have here. So we can break that hit result and we get a bunch of information 
out of that, which is nice. We're going to be using the impact normal here. And if you don't know what that is, I'm just going to show you real quick. If we do a line tracer uh, into, for instance, this wall, the impact normal is going to be whatever the outward facing direction of the geometry that we hit is. So even if we hit this at like a glancing angle, the impact normal is going to be the point where we hit it and then perpendicular to that geometry. So we can use that to set our rotation. So let's do that. Set actor rotation. So the easiest way to do this is our new rotation. We can split that struct. Uh, the X and the Y, we actually don't want to change at all. We only want to ever change the Z. So what we'll do is we'll get this impact normal. First and foremost, break the vector. So we get the individual X, Y, and Z axis. And then we can plug this into the Z, except this will be making us face away from the wall. And we will always want to be facing toward the wall instead. So we can easily just add 180 degrees to that to make us always face toward the wall instead. And do make sure that you don't make the same mistake that I did here. Uh, you don't want to just go directly impact normal break vector. What you want to do is you want to get the rotation from X vector instead. And you want to break that and use uh, the yaw from this. You need to make sure that you make it into a rotation uh, instead of just a vector before you start adding uh, stuff to it. So one thing I also do like to do is uh, getting the character movement here. And we're going to set the velocity. And we're going to interpolate that between our current velocity and a velocity of zero. And you might think, okay, but that means that we're eventually going to... Uh, get to a stop because we're interpolating towards zero and that would be the case if we didn't also have gravity so what will end up happening here is we'll have gravity pulling us down and this code over here will be slowing us down but then gravity will accelerate us again and then this will slow us down again and that kind of works to a pretty decent equilibrium alternatively you could also just set your gravity scale to being lower if you prefer that uh, it's a little bit messy though because then you have to save what your previous gravity was somewhere and then you need to set that back and I don't like doing that. So the way I do it uh, is we also get the velocity and we simply use the v interp to constants. That requires a interp speed, a target and a current velocity and our interp speed I've got set to about 2000 in my own project here. You might want to experiment a little bit with what works for you. And then the delta time we can get with uh, get world delta seconds. And that we will put into our velocity. And now that we have all that set up, we have a wall sliding mechanic where we are sliding against the wall. And then whenever we get away from the wall, our wall sliding ends. The interpolation speed of 2000 in this case is way too much. So let's set that to something like 500 instead. Again, you need to experiment a little bit with that interpolation speed. That is then again, way too slow. So it's a little bit of trial and error to figure out what works for you. Again, you can also just set the gravity scale to whatever works for you, uh, if you prefer that. But now we have a slow slide down and we could have an animation with like one hand on the wall and one foot on the wall getting ready to wall jump off like I have in my example. I don't have an animation for that for this character right now. Now, we need to actually add in the wall jump itself. That's what we're doing here, uh, first and foremost. So in our input action for jumping, what we're going to do here is I want to check whether or not we are currently wall sliding. Because if we're wall sliding, we don't want to do a normal jump. We want to do whatever we are going to implement for our wall jump. So let's add in a branch in here and check for B is wall sliding, the ball that we just made. If we're not wall sliding, we can just do a normal jump. But if we are wall sliding, we're going to make a new event here, just a custom event, which we'll call wall jump. And we will be executing the wall jump instead. So let's add in that one over there. And this is actually remarkably easy to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our actor rotation because we want to rotate away from the wall now that we're actually jumping. 
So the way we'll do that is we'll just uh, once again split the structure pin, leave the X and the Y entirely alone, don't worry about any of that. And we'll get our actor rotation, also split the structure pin for this, and then we'll do the exact same thing that we did before. That being, we'll take the Z or the yaw, and to that we will add 180 degrees. So 180, and then we'll set that as our new rotation. To again make us turn around half a circle, facing away from the wall now. After we have done that, we're going to launch our character in the direction that we are now facing. So we can use the launch character here, and we're going to um, do a little bit of math here. So first thing first, we have a get actor forward vector again, which is the direction that our actor is facing, which has just been updated through the set actor location. And this we will add something to. So we will add whatever our jumping is going to be. So let's say we add our normal jump velocity to that. So we'll get our character movement and we'll get jump Z velocity. And we'll put that into the Z for uh, what we're adding to our forward vector. You also want to multiply the forward vector by a certain amount and this is kind of whatever you want this is the amount of power you're going to be moving away from the wall with so this could also just be your jump velocity this could be a little bit more than your jump velocity i usually would say that you want to do this a little bit less than your jump velocity so we'll just convert this structure pin into a float and say uh like multiply this by a thousand i don't know what our normal jump velocity is 700 so let's make that like 1200 and that will now be our new launching velocity we want to override the z and you can also if you want to override the x and the y uh, this does end up feeling a little bit clunky sometimes so you should just test out whether or not you like the feeling of overriding the x and the y the z you do need to override and that is basically the rough setup of making a wall jump so let's try it out now. We can jump up against the wall and immediately get launched off. And that is because uh, we're using the input action uh, triggered state. And this also runs whenever we are holding it down. So we probably want to only jump on uh, started. So only when we initially press the button. And you could even set up things like these little parkour courses here where you jump back and forth between these two walls and just generally have a good time and do whatever it is that you need to do. Once again, these project files are down below in the description for you to play around with and check out if you want to, if you are a Patreon or a YouTube member. It's always very much appreciated to support the channel. Next time we'll do some uh, more fun stuff. I'll see you then. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,